Hello folks, I've had early access to Pacific Drive and as I've been playing it, I've been putting together a list of the 25 things you really need to know as a new player. Number one, scrap everything that you can because you're going to need a lot of resources to repair the old jalopy as it has its bottom kicked out on the road. So you need to get as many of the basic resources as you can like scrap metal, duct tape, plastic and fabric because they're used in practically everything. Fabric as well is really useful because you use it in the fabricator. Uh, when you're making blueprints, you need at least one piece of fabric to make a blueprint. So don't neglect fabric either. Just shove it all into your inventory, dump it all into your cardboard boxes, and then dump it all into your uh, into your lockers. Now, if you find yourself short of something in particular, like for example scrap metal, glass, rubber, and duct tape, you'll generally find those hidden in the scrap cars, the scrap metal that you'll find strewn around around the actual zone. And if you look in the trunks as well, they generally have road flares in them. So they're the best sources for scrap metal, glass, rubber, and duct tape. If you want to look for fabric, food, and maybe sometimes consumer electronics that you can destroy and get boards out of, electronic boards, uh, these are in the cabins, which are the house-looking things, the small wooden cabins around the place. The Arda trailers, they are really good because they do have excellent material in them, like chemicals, gas cylinders, and various stuff like that, the rarer materials that you need in the more complex parts. So different sources come from different places. Now, as well as scanning things in the field, scanning stuff on your car will reveal what's wrong with it. Because you may get cracked doors or, or tyres that are completely ready to go bye-bye. But look, for example, here now, I've just noticed my engine smoking. And it's got a little cross on it there, look. So if I just tap for the scan, it'll tell me it's busted and what I need to fix it. Uh, the mechanics kit. So yes, yeah, so you can hold this down as well and it'll just give you a breakdown of all the different items that uh, is actually happening. So we can see here we've got breaking. The end is nigh or, or for... Uh, what's that for? Badly damaged the verge of coming apart, uh, busted engine, cracked windows. So you can see we've got all these different kinds of uh, damages that we can see. I've got loads more undiscovered as well. But you can see here for the carburetor engine, look, it says fix uh, with a mechanics kit. So just pop over to the uh, workbench and uh, do this. And then let's go and see if we can make a mechanics kit. Hopefully we can. There we go. Create a mechanics kit. Lovely. Thanks very much. Uh, and uh, then we just walk back over here and use it. Hang on. Let me stick it in my hand. So here we go, we can use it now to repair the engine. One, two, three. There we are, and I <laughs> tap of it and it's all done. That's great. So you can see how the scanning as well, not only, uh, well, progresses your fabricator stuff, but also helps you diagnose problems with your car. It is possible to flip your car. Look at this, here we go. <laughs> I smashed right on the roof and I utterly panicked because once you do that or you trash your car completely, you get an emergency teleporter which drags you back to the garage so what you end up doing is losing all your stuff that you've collected uh, but that doesn't happen here you've got something that says activate emergency teleporter but what that does is uh, flip the car back onto its wheels and you can carry on which is completely excellent I had a mild panic when I managed to do it it's great you can see here I'm trying to kick it to get it back upright because I was panicking that it was the end of the mission and my boot was full of loads of goodness but look there we are here's the emergency teleporter so you're scanning for warp location warping vehicle and it looks like it's sticking on the ground then there she goes she's back on her wheels excellent now here's something that you might find very useful when you're driving you're having a little look and you see you've got to sort of turn and look at your uh, at your screen there well if you go to the settings and go to gameplay there at the top you've got your field of view sliders and uh, this is the car field of view so the more you uh, put this up the more you can see the screen in the corner of your eye so let me just show you let's stick it all the way up to 120 look and then I'll come back out again and look now I can see the screen as well as where I'm driving although I do find this a bit too weirdly elongated gated for my tastes so what I tend to do is uh, do it so I'm only just shifting my head attach so let's go back into settings go to gameplay and I slide it to about 105 which I think is what destiny is that's what I seem to be used to anyway that's just the arbitrary number I picked but uh, looking at it yeah that's much better for me I don't mind having a little bit of luck because it adds to it adds to the fun uh, of shifting your head but uh, that's a lot easier so slide that FOV slider to your heart's content in the car and talking about cosmetics if you want to paint your car you're going to come across paint in the field 
and you can store them here on the paint shelf look okay so once you pick them up you can then go to your paint shelf and there we are you can see i've got green paint i've got black paint and paint stripper which takes the paint off and decals as well but let me just show you for example i just picked that up put it in my hand by equipping it there's the black paint and it's just a spray can and then i can just spray look the various panels you can also spray the bodywork, so you've got a steel panel and also a chassis there. I can I can paint the entire chassis. Boom! There we are. It's gone all look all black. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's very, very good. I do like it. Looks a bit knackered, this, but never mind. Now the decals are put on in much the same way that the paint is. You can see I've already got a couple on here, but let me quickly show you one anyway. We go to the paint shelf, for that is where they are stored, like the paint. And I've got one here, look, which is lovely. I haven't put this one on before. It's called the Radium Driver, so you can put that actually in your hand and you've got the decal kit radium driver there then all you do is apply it like you would at paint so you hold on the area and see it says right trigger there and oh look <laughs> I've got spaceships all over the place. There we go. You can stick it on the separate panels there as well. But you do have an amount of this. It does go down. So there we go. Excellent. Oh, it doesn't seem to actually go down, does it, with the decal kit? Yes, it does. Sorry, in the bottom left-hand corner there, there's a bar. Look. So there we go. There's your decal kits and how they work. Out in the field, light is a massive problem. Now, of course, you've got your car headlights to show where you're going. You can also have flares as well. And you pick the flares up, you just strike them by holding down the trigger if you're using the controller. And there we go, we've got a nice bit of light here. But uh, they don't last very long at all, these flares. Uh, and uh, it's very, very annoying. So uh, what you can do is build a torch, which is very, very useful. Look, and it does last a lot longer. And because you're going to find yourself in so many dark nooks and crannies, a torch will be incredibly useful. The flares are actually quite uh, versatile because you've got your flare gun as well, which you can pick up and create. But if you just pop that off in there, look, you can see if I've shot it off too way too far here. But there's a flare gun there that you can use to uh, illuminate certain areas. And not only that as well, you have this, which is very useful. It's a relightable flare. So it's like a torch, really, that you can use. And there we are, you can just relight it there and then you can turn it off again to save on the flare. Because once you've started a flare, you can't stop it. So this is a good way to uh, utilise your flares a bit more effectively because otherwise you end up throwing them on the floor and wasting them quite a lot of the time. So yes, this is a very handy one, the uh, relightable flare. The fabricator station is so incredibly important because it's got all your extra upgrades <laughs> that you can use. I've got on the wrong thing. I've got on this one here. Let me go into it. There we are, look. So let's have a little look here at what we've got. You can see I've already, uh, in the white, they're the ones you've already created. The ones in the yellow are the ones that you can unlock now, but you haven't because they've got the dotted line around them. So you can see here, I'm looking at this uh, expanded locker. I need to have the craft map, which I've got. And I've researched the steel sheet and I need to have uh, five steel sheets as well. And what was it? Uh, 0.3 of the Kalim energy. And I've currently got 6.6 .6 in the stable there. You can see as well, it says unstable and corrupt. Haven't managed to collect that, but those are prerequisites for unlocking other things much further on in the uh, research tree here. So, for example, here I've got the mini turbine that I'm wanting to unlock. So it costs one fabric, that's all they ever cost. But it says prerequisites at the top, ba a basic workbench, unlock a side rack, and research the circuit board. So I've got all that in, and now I can just go, tink, and there we go. It gobs out the, uh, the blueprint. Even though I've created it, look, it's still got the dotted line around it. You need to read the blueprint first. So you come out, find the blueprint, just give it a tap and a read, and there we go. Then it'll be uh, marked as red and available to build on your workbench. Now, aside from the blueprints, the fabricator actually creates parts that you can actually stick on your car as opposed to just reading a blueprint for example here i've got a side rack upgrade here so it looks for the craft mat to have been made and also to install the scanning antenna which is part of the story mission or at least the first mission or the second one something like that but look we need seven scrap metal and stable energy as well 0.3 so let me show you i shall build this baby there we go and that will then come out of the side uh, refrigerator type thing lovely not the table because then you can pick that baby up and then you can go and take that and put it on the car and uh, the side racks just go on the uh, rear of the car so i've got two on here look i've also got my electro antenna which charges the battery from electricity strikes or lightning as it's known in the real world here we go so there we are just stick it on look Badoomf. And there we go, there's the next side rack on the car. So it doesn't just do blueprints, it also creates physical objects provided you've got the right resources. 
And one other thing you should notice about the fabricator is that you have to scan certain things out in the field as well to unlock some of the things. So not only do you need to have built, for example, you can see here the prerequisite for this lightning rod was a basic workbench, unlock the side rack, one fabric, but also I needed to scan a spark tower anomaly out in the field. So make sure you scan as much as you can in the field, even if you don't know what you're going for. Everything you come across, scan, scan, scan. These are the really annoying items. These are called broken bunnies. They don't actually damage you, but they suck stuff out of your car make it go all funny now if you're wondering how to deal with them you can actually go outside and just pick the gits up and then bung them off into the woods if you want to with that sleigh by throwing them and do the same with this one as well don't be too scared of those although they make horrendous noises and do scare the crap out of you when you're in a really dark <laughs> rainy night and you don't know what the hell's going on you can also destroy these bunnies as well with your uh <clears throat> with your crowbar well that's what i found anyway the other ones you're going to find early in game are the angry abductors it's those fellows there they can really really scare the cack out of you with their horrendous noises. But what they do is uh, they'll s attach a magnet to your car and drag it off the road when you're driving, which can cause loads of damage. But there we go, they turn red, he stuck a magnet, and he's trying to rip me out, and I've got the car on brakes, so it's not going very far. So you need to apply the brakes and reverse on pull back and try and steer control from it, and then it will eventually let go. But these guys can be so annoying and can ruin it when you're trying to get to the exit really quick. Going off-road is a necessity in this game when you're going to get trashed by driving through the trees and you've got like inclination uh, alerts if you're driving up too steep a uh, uh, slope for example or there's loads of mud everywhere. Now you do start off with spare tyres but I've already upgraded you to off-road tyres. They last a hell of a lot longer than either the, uh, the spare or the summer tyres and they give you more grip as well in the mud. They are well worth picking up believe me because you're going to come off and you're going to find little things like this all around the place that you want to kick in and get bits out of, thanks to the wheels. As you're driving around the map, you're going to see this huge blob. Uh, basically, that's an instability storm. And if you get stuck in that, you're in a lot of pain. It's not the terrible storm that chases you at the end every time you want to leave. Uh, but it is a nightmare. And if you get in there, you're going to get a lot of damage to your car. So I'd avoid those as much as you can. But generally, you find yourself plunging into the heart of it occasionally because you want to go get some stuff. But just be warned, there's radiation in those as well, which damage you and also damage your car. Look out for all this horrendous nonsense. Now, have you noticed every time you get out of your car and then jump back in it, you always forget to put it in drive before you drive off and you just rev and the engine spins. There's a little award for this as well, like a little trophy because I've already done it 25 or was it 100 times, I think which is ridiculous. So it can get a little bit grating after a while, but have no fear because there is something to cure that problem. If you come to the fabricator station here and go and have a little look, if you come under utilities, which is the little radar thing, one from the end there, you can see this, the auto parker. Now, uh, right arm getting tired, rudimentary weight and motion sensors below the driver's seat will automatically engage and disengage the parking brake. So you never have to worry about this anymore. So I would recommend you build one of these and you won't ever have to worry about putting it in gear before you drive off again. The only thing you need to have had for this is the workbench and the seat rack. Because actually, if you look at the icon itself, it's got the P on it, which re represents the parking. But then you've got that little sort of inverted L shape there. That means it's a seat rack. So it has to go on a seat rack. And if you come and have a little look at the back of the car seat here, I can open the door. Uh, let me, uh, And you can see there, look, the auto parker is built on a seat rack there. So uh, that's how it works. I can thoroughly recommend it. You'll never go vroom and spin the drive shaft freely again. Excellent. Now this here you can see are limb anchors and you need these to escape a zone. Now you need to pick up a certain amount of these in order to create a portal back to the garage. Uh, but how many do you need? Well it does tell you, look it says at the bottom there, charge required 2.0k limb. Okay and we've got naught. So what you need to do is uh, come out of your old automobile, go and pick one up and shove it in and then you'll see how much uh, that will add on to the charge. So we just rip it up out of here. But once you do this, I found that it does trigger some instability and maybe even hastens the storm closing in on you. So let's stick it in here. Don't forget to shut the door again. Pop around this side again and we'll go and have a little look and see how much it says we need left. There we are. We've got, uh, what have we got here? We've got two KLM that's already in there. So we've, that's enough. So there's a full charge there. Now then, you can see though, we've got these gateways. I've got one right next to me here and one right next to me there. 
You can see the zones that are around them. You've got to be out of that zone in order for it to activate. So we can either drive all the way back to this zone here, or we can use this one here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive up the road and get out of the red ring area so this activates. So there we go. Look, we're just out of the area of influence of that. So that means we can activate this one now. So the best thing to do is kind of get yourself right on the edge of the zone so you can pile there really really quickly that's the best way to do it okay <laughs> this is such fun bit of the game but it's also rather intense because everything goes absolutely bonkers now you might be forced to do this as well because you hear a siren going off and the siren basically means the storm is closing in my god it's all going bonkers here so what we need to do though is we haven't heard a siren i'm in the middle of instability we'll activate this look bang there we go let's say storm warning and it'll go drive 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 and all you need to do now is drive to the gate Pop straight up there. Whoa! Here we go. Way! Lovely. Uh, you can see the gate just popping up in front of us there. So we've kind of put ourselves on a heading. This shouldn't be too stressy to get to. But you've got to pick the one you want to go to. Don't pick one that's miles away and you haven't got much time. And be aware of the radius as well that's around it in order for you to pick it up. Because you can see here now. If I just stop and look, look the, the gauge on the side there is going crazy, and then you can see the red storm closing in, okay? So you've got instability, which is the yellow, which is closing in, which is like little explosions, and then you've got the wall of fire, which is the storm after it. So make sure you can kind of survive in the yellow. Look, ooh, it's going a bit more crazy. But the storm itself, you really do have a limited amount of time. Here we go. It's all closing in around me now. So uh, we've just got... There we are. So we're in all the stability. We go... Ah! It's a disaster! You see what can happen? Let's put our foot down and go straight to it. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Yes, so this is Puyo. And this isn't the worst bit. The worst bit is when the red wall hits you and uh, you get consumed by it. But there we are. I think we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And we're there. Now, those limb anchors you collect also go into like a stockpile of limb energy that you can use back here at the fabricator. So you can see here, for example, like the expanded locker there. I need 0.5 K limb in order to create the expanded locker. But if you look at my stable energy that I've got, I've only got 0.1. There's the unstable and the corrupt as well. They're going to be coming from the different zones. So you've got the mid zone, which will be unstable, and then corrupt, which will be the central zone. So you do need to make sure you stockpile as much of those limbs as well when you're out in the field. Don't just get the amount that you need to travel back. Uh, make sure you collect as many as you can, particularly if it's a nice and easy one, because it's stuff that you use back in the garage. When you're driving into the garage, make sure you drive all the way in, because then you can see the little monitor will go beep and activate there. That's really handy little monitor that, because it shows you exactly what's wrong with your car. So you just go up to it and activate it, and uh, it'll tell you, look, as well, it'll give you a handy little list. It'll show you how much you need to repair for the car, how much fuel you've got in the tank, whether your battery needs to be charged, and a handy little survival tool thing there, so you can stick in your scrapper, repair putty, etc. It is very, very useful. It'll also show you what extras you've installed on the car, too. You can see there, look, there's me parking brake. I've got an extra fuel container there for, uh, well, fuel. <laughs> And various other things like the floodlights. Oh, I gotta show you these. Look at these floodlights right on the side of the car. I've gotta turn them on. It's absolutely chucking it down out there. Let me put these floodlights on. You're ready. Hang on, open the door. Now you've got a little shortcut menu here to activate different things. I've got a handbrake that I've installed and floodlights. Ready? One, two, three. Right, I've turned them on. Look! <laughs> Hang on, I can't get out. Look! <laughs> Look how strong they are! They're really <laughs> Look at that! Hello, where? Hello, mum! Oh my goodness me, they're ridiculously strong. But very useful in a pinch when it's incredibly dark. What the hell's that? Oh, it's an impact hammer. Here's something you might have discovered whilst you're out and about. These things called dumpster pearls. Now, if you have a look in the logbook, it explains that you need a uh, matter... What's it called? Oh, I can't remember now. It's a matter... Deconstructor. Yes, that's it. A matter deconstructor in order to unlock the goodies therein. So basically, they're compact bits of junk that you can just deconstruct using the matter deconstructor. So we'll pop one in our hands here, look, and then we'll dump it in the matter deconstructor. This is, of course, something that you can build using the fabricator. And uh, let's shove it in and we get all the goodies out. Let's see what it's given us. Well, it's quite a nice wadge of scrap there. Ooh, and lots and lots. Oh my god, look at all those steel sheets. 
I've got two of them. Let's stick another one in. Uh, so you can just stick it in like that. And whoosh, even more comes out. Look at all the goodies. <laughs> now, you know, we've always got a broken down car here. Don't forget as well, we've got some electronics on the side. Don't miss them. Very easy to miss. You might need one or two. Very useful in the early part of the game. Now, what you may notice as you're out on the road is that your car starts doing really weird things, like uh, the lights flashing on and off. Or for me, it was my bonnet popping open and closing, and I couldn't figure out what was going on, and it gets incredibly annoying when the bonnet pops open because you can't bloody see. Well, this station here is called your Tinker Station. This is how you diagnose all these quirks. Look, at the top there, it's got fixes. As you can see at the moment, I've got one, two, three, four quirks on the car, but I haven't really noticed what they are yet because they can be well I haven't really <laughs> I haven't really been paying attention but one time I did notice the quirk like I said my bonnet was popping open so what I had to do was uh, figure out when that happened and I noticed it happened when I shifted the car into reverse so what you had to do was basically put in uh, that event so what you have to do is basically put in the string of events what happens in logical order so what happened, what did happen before was, it was when the shifter went into, uh, I think it went into drive, or shifts into drive, then the hood popped open, okay? So uh, I can put hood here and then uh, popped open, opens, and then it scans for it. I've already got that done, so it says a type of diagnosis, you have seven guesses remaining. So I say yes to scan it, it won't find anything because it doesn't happen at the moment. It's a bad guess and it shows you there's naught out of four correct. But you can use this to diagnose the problem and then once it's diagnosed the problem it'll also give you the cure for it and you can do it from the screen provided you've got the correct stuff like for example a mechanics kit or whatever so this is a really interesting thing to have but you've got to know the logical sequence of events to put in before you can diagnose what's causing that really irritating problem storage is incredibly important in the garage because you're going to be bringing home so much junk from your uh, expeditions. Now what you might find is that you've got your cardboard boxes here and you stick it in your pockets and then you run it over and stick it in your cupboards but of course they're going to get full really quick. But what you do get early on in the game is a cargo trunk here which is very very useful because you can pick it up and pop it wherever you want to in the garage and then you can grab stuff from your, uh, look there I've got some stuff here in my box Ooh, and uh, I can pick all this stuff up and then just dump it all in the cargo trunk thusly. Let's do this. Go on, hang on. Let's put it there. There we go. No, no, no. I picked it up by mistake. See, there's all this confusion here. That's the one I really wanted to do. I did it again. <laughs> Wait down, you stupid idiot. That one I meant. Tap. Tap it. Yes, that's the one. And you can go over here and then dump them into the cargo box in order to ferry it to perhaps a different locker for you to store it up. Remember as well, though, you don't have to go and pick everything individually. Uh, I've got a button here on the controller. It says R. And press the R stick to transfer materials. It just brings everything all over in one go. And then anything to do with uh, perhaps uh, detailing or painting, you have to grab them over manually if you wanted to put it in there. I don't want to do that, though. I want to put that one back in the uh, painting shelf. So there you go. Once you've filled it up, you can pick it up and take it whatever you want. Uh, if you can't fit it all in your pocket, it's rather useful. And talking of storage, you can, of course, expand the locker size, which we're going to do here. There we go. And uh, that's given us, then, uh, uh, an item to stick in the garage. And you can put it wherever you want. So it looks like we're going to be able to stick an extra locker. And I think I'd rather have one out here by the car. Look. So let's go and have a look and see what happens. Let's stick it in. There we go. Here comes the transformation. And then, voila, we're bound to have another locker next to it. Which is very, very useful. Oh, look, it's like a chemically locker. There we are. Excellent. Very, very handy, that. Now, occasionally, you're going to find that uh, it's too much for you and you're going to die out in the wilderness in a particular zone. But don't panic because you don't actually die. You do get transported back to the garage. So you never actually die in the survival game. You can come back, repair yourself and try again. But, and it's a huge but, everything that you picked up on that trip will disappear when you go back to the garage with the emergency teleport. So it's not life and death, but it really is because resources is your life in this game. So if you do crash and you can't get to the portal in time before your car basically cops it, you're going to lose all your beautiful gear. There's a heads up for you. 
Now, as we know, there's loads of darkness in this game, and you can find yourself completely sitting in the pitch black in your car. Well, here's something you might not know. We've got a light in the car. If you just look up there, huzzah, we've got an interior light. Although I wouldn't recommend turning it on when you're driving because it makes it more difficult to see. Turn it off to save your eyelids. What can be a massive pain in the bum is picking up all the individual bits of scrap that you find all over the place. Because particularly in the dark, you might find that they all get stuck under a chassis or, or whatever. So what you can do here is build something called a handy vac. It's very, very useful. You need to unlock it, of course, on the uh, fabrication table. I got it there, look. Uh, but I haven't actually got enough for it. You've got pressurized cartridges uh, and rubber, electronics and plastic. But once you create that hand vac, it is so useful because all you got to do is stick it in your hand and suck everything up and it pulls everything that you may be missing. Very useful if you find yourself in the dark as well. Get yourself a hand vac, it's marvellous. Now this route planner is excellent because it can show you exactly what you've got in the different areas. First of all, you've got uh, how many charges it's going to take for you to jump back from a place there. For example, this one here. You can see it's got destination data that I've already been there. We've got spark towers. Uh, we've got stable anchors there, of course, which is very useful. Angry abductors and spark surges. They're all very irritating. And you can see as well, there's a density look of different items. So there's a reasonable density of fuel, which you can pick up to refuel your car. Uh, scrappy cars on the side of the road. Uh, you've got containers around the place, all that kind of thing, and houses as well. So it'll give you a good idea of where to go if you want to go on a uh, on a scrapping journey when it's a story mission it'll have uh, an indicator about it uh, above it that there's a story mission there but these bits here they mean there's incredible extreme conditions there that'll kick your face in yeah and you can see as well you need to pick up two of these stable charges of this to be able to jump back to the garage and you can't drive there directly of course even though you pick it here on the map uh, once you go back to your car uh, and drive down the road uh, let's just go there to the actual portal. Start this baby up. Oh, I love this. Shove it into gear. There's my crowbar there as well. Look, let's pop on out here. Uh, once you go through the portal, then you'll be able to pick the next route that you want to go to. But you have to drive through that one in order to get to your final destination. So let's uh, go through the... Uh, the normal bit here, which will take us on our journey. One, two, three, and Q. There we go. So when we come to the map, look, well, that's the one we've picked. But we can't go there directly. Yeah, I'm trying to click it. We can't. But I can go via either one of these two ways. I can go either via G8 or I can go via uh, E7. Let's try E7. And you go, there's the growing line. Boom. And then we'll go to E7. So this is a lovely opportunity to go and get some gear and stuff like that. So if you look at your map here, you can see what we've got on the map. So those are the Adra Towers I'm telling you about. These are houses. That's the road we need to drive through to get to our destination. And uh, if you want to as well, there's uh, various points of interest you can go and have a little look at when you're here. But these sections, basically, you have to drive through rather than, uh, uh, you know, get a, a stable charge to teleport out of. These are incredibly handy. These are recharge and repair stations. You can see them on the map. Look, they're kind of marked with a little, like, a lightning bolt. You can't see it, my bloody thing's in the way there. But you can see them there. It looks like it's got a little lightning bolt recharge thing coming out of it. So what you do is just drive under it, and uh, it'll repair as much of your car as it can. Ready? So here we go. And we go. Right, so you can see, look, uh, my, uh, my damage is going back down. Ooh, let's lock that off. See, my panel's getting repaired. Side panels, wheels bonnet but it won't be able to do the lot it'll do as much as it can i think it's got like a a fixed charge that it can do so it's doing that one there oh come on repair the light for me do the light for me because the lights just go dimmer the more damage they get we've got a wheel and a light there we go it's done the light look excellent excellent nearly there oh that's it so we're spent but look it's a really good job of repairing the car which is totally marvelous Let's put the light on so we can see what's going on. Yes, that's grand. Uh, but we, look, there's, there's also a little chest here as well, which we can nick stuff out of. So keep an eye out for those. They are completely brilliant. Where's my bloody car gone? There it is. Don't miss out on the mysterious audio recordings you'll find spread out around the exclusion zone because they give you loads of interesting backstory on some of the characters and what happened here. You can see them on your map with a small tape icon, well worth picking up and having a listen to while you're walking around the scary woods. And finally, 
build yourself a basketball athletic simulation station. Do you know why? Because it's the most annoying thing in the whole game. I don't think I've scored a single basket yet. Come on, throw, 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 and... Oh, it's so annoying. If you've ever managed to get a ball in, let me know. I don't want to look at the fax machine. Let me know if you've ever managed to get a ball in. Because I just can't do it for the life of me. And again... Uh, it's so annoying. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other hints and tips because it's a brilliant game and I'm going to continue to churn out the content for this one because I'm enjoying it so much. I'm also live streaming it as well. Uh, so come along and enjoy the uh, fear and chaos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall speak to you all again very soon. Sausage. Uh,